Okay, so we've got our 45-15 set up here. So each station, you're doing two rounds of 45 seconds with a 15 second break in between. So if it's push-ups, we've got push-ups for 45, rest 15, push-ups again for 45, and then 15 seconds to get to the next one. The equipment that you'll need, you'll want sliders for a couple different things here. You're gonna want some different weights, mostly medium to heavy weights. Um, we've got a single leg RDL with a row. Um, we've got split squats, if you wanna hold a heavier weight for that. Russian twist, sitting on the floor, so probably more like a medium weight for that. Um, so any weights you have available will be good. And then you also want a bench, like I mentioned, the split squats that you're gonna have your foot elevated. So a bench, a chair, a couch, something that you can put your foot up onto. So first station, you're gonna want your sliders. We'll go in about 10 seconds. It's gonna be a wide mountain climber. So mountain climber position, but you're pulling your knees out wider than normal. Good way to warm up here. Ben hates it. Yeah. It's good for us. Get a little uncomfortable early on and then try to just settle into the mayhem and continue to work. Easy for me to say. Make sure you're getting some oblique activation on either side here. I am, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, as you pull that knee up, pull that hip up as well, so that hip's gonna kind of follow or lead the movement. 15 seconds. Ten. Being 45, 15, we'll take 15 seconds to rest and five seconds. Two. Yeah, a little air. Yeah. Good start. Watch the hip bone is going to drag up. Think about almost that side plank hip drop where you use that oblique to push the hips up. Use the obliques to pull the hips up on this one. We're going to go from wide mountain climber to squat jump with a pulse at the bottom. So our next exercise, still a little bit of duration left here, is that squat jump with a pulse at the bottom. 20 seconds out. Have fun with this one. 10. Two. Yeah, it looks like when we start to look at a circle, it has like four quadrants. Yeah. It's always like something. Our solution make one should thick. Butts and abs. Butts and abs. <laughs> Every stitch. So you get your normal squat jump, but then as you come down, you get a pulse at the bottom. So it's going to be that half rep in the bottom part of the movement. Working on that soft landing. If these are really burning you out, you can take a little pause as you come down on each one. Otherwise, just that continuous movement is going to get a really good burn in the legs. Keeping the knees apart too. We do these with the mini band sometimes. So think about even without the band, you're still thinking about pushing those knees out a little bit. Seven seconds to go. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be a long time. <laughs> Good old cow. Good old cow. So 30 seconds left on these. And if you, even if you're not getting much of a jump, even getting up onto the toes, pushing through the toes like you are trying to do a jump, that's still gonna get a lot of work there with the legs. 15 seconds left. Next one's gonna be down on the floor. We're gonna have a 90 degree crunch. So you'll be laying on your back for that one. Five seconds. Good. Yeah. Here we go. Three, 
two, knees 90, hips 90. Nice, easy crunch up. Piece of cake. Keep that back down, draw yourself up. Don't yank on your head. Easy exhale on the way up. 20 seconds here. Second set of crunches. If this gets a little crazy, you can set those feet down. Same crunch pattern, just real easy crunches. Allow the rib cage to open up a little bit, but as it does so, you're using the abs to slow that movement down while pressing the back in the ground. So unravel the ribs. 20 seconds. Ten. Two. Next station is going to be bicycles, so on your back, similar position. So another good burn in the abs here. Reaching the leg out, bringing the elbow towards the opposite knee. And you can mix up tempo a little bit. Usually going a little slower is better, just more control so you can focus on using the abs and the obliques for this. If it feels easy, get that foot really far out there. Maybe spend a little more time with both feet out farther away from the body and maybe not bring that knee up quite as far. Just some options for you to make it more challenging if you need. You could always leave one foot down on the floor, one heel down for these to make them a little easier if you need to. Three, two, one. After those crunches, you should feel these nice. Good breathing on this one. Exhale either every time you come across your body or every other time. So every time the right elbow comes up, you can exhale. Depending on your speed, you can adjust that. But hands are lightly supporting the head. Don't want to feel anything weird in the neck. 20 seconds to go. Next one is going to be a single leg RDL with a row. So you're going to want a medium-ish, maybe heavy-ish weight. Seven seconds. That might be one thing that's the easier with bicycles. So this will be a row from that single leg. Single leg RDL, two a row, you can hit one row here, two rows here, 15 rows here, whatever you want to do. You can do one RDL, one row, one RDL, 10 rows. Uh, it depends on where you want the effort to be. Doing one RDL, one row is going to give you kind of a combination and probably less rows where staying in that RDL position static like Ben is and then going row motion is going to be probably a little more arm dominant. So. We don't get to pull on very many things, so you might take this opportunity to go through more rows. Or if your stability is not great, you might do one RDL, one row, and just kind of go through that pattern. Up to you, five seconds out. Three. 
three, two, same thing here, guys. RDL, row. I save. It's a good preview. It's still, you know, ten stations away, but nice of you to demo it. Twenty-five seconds here. Our next exercise is going to be a side plank hip drop. So we get a nice big side plank position, allow the hips to fall under control, pull them back up. 10 seconds. So a good strong position down on that elbow and shoulder. Slowly lowering those hips down to the floor and then pushing them back up towards the ceiling. So you're trying to get that bottom hip as far away from the floor as you can at the top. You can always go from your bottom knee as well if you want to. That top hand can be across your ribs, on your hip, reaching up towards the ceiling. Doesn't make too big of a difference where you want to put that. 15 seconds to go. to the other side. Again, get that good foundation with the shoulder and the elbow. And then drop in. And when you're in that top position, trying to crunch down, squeezing those obliques down on the bottom side. Twenty seconds left to go here. Next one is going to be a forward and reverse lunge. You are welcome to grab weights or a weight for those if you want to. Seven seconds left. lunge from one foot so travel forward right leg travel back right leg and then really trying to take out that middle touch if we're able to so stepping over the other foot if your stability is not fantastic you might need that middle contact just to kind of reset your base but if you can follow Ben's lead and then if you did not grab weight it feels kind of easy pick up the tempo this this exercise is more about the tempo than it is uh, most anything else. So settling into a fast tempo will make this hard. 10, if it wasn't already. You feel a lot of legs, both sides. Five. Two, same thing, other leg, left leg forward, left leg back, don't touch in the middle, step over the hole, and drop in quick. Nice absorption, nice easy catch. And try to get a lot of depth in both knees, so in that forward lunge, let the knee settle almost to the floor, reverse lunge, same thing, almost to the floor. 20 seconds out. And we're going to go into eccentric hamstring curls next. We'll grab both discs, hips up like a glute bridge, and then a very slow, controlled release. Ten. Five. Okay, grab your sliders, toss them out on the floor, get your heels on them. From a nice 
nice high glute bridge position. Two feet out. And so like you said, you're starting in that good glute bridge. Going nice and slow, trying to keep the hips up too as you extend those legs. And then from the bottom position, a couple options. You can try to keep the hips up off the floor while you drag your feet back. It's gonna make it a lot more challenging. Or you can keep your butt down on the ground and then just slide back up, make that easy. And then put more focus on the eccentric part. If you're really strong with these, spend more time on the bottom half of the movement. When your legs are getting straighter, try to slow that down. Maybe add little pauses in there too. Eight seconds left. But butt super tight. But but. And if you're super super strong with these single and you want to try leg. single leg, you're welcome <laughs> to give that a try. That gets really tough. You better be able to control it if you are going single leg and not just flying through them thinking you're sweet because you can do single leg. So again, keeping the butt tight as you lower, it gets harder the farther and farther your feet are away from your body. It's okay. 15 seconds to go. One or two more good slow ones. Next one is going to be a slow push-up. So you'll stay down on the floor, but you'll flip it over. Five. A slow push-up's gonna be slow and deliberate both directions. So drop in, maybe a five second count, and then press on a five second count. So real easy and in. Keep the lats tight, building tension, and a nice slow press back to return. Glutes stay tight, ribs are down. Slow both ways. If toes weren't bad, move to a single leg. So one foot on the floor, one foot up, and then hit your slow push up both ways from there. 20 seconds out. And then another alternative to make it just a little harder, if you're looking for harder, don't spend so much time at the top. So don't lock the push up out. Get up and then drop right back down. Five. Three, two, back on these push-ups, guys. Drop slow, press slow, full depth if we can. You might not be able to stay in a one breath per push-up cadence because of the speed here. So breathe as you want. Keep the air moving a little bit. Do a good 25 seconds out here. The next exercise is going to be a single leg jump with no back foot contact. If you need the back foot for stability, you can treat it as a sprinter start. Otherwise, single leg jump, no back foot contact. One more rep in push-ups, five seconds to go. Three, two. Single leg jump, these will feel good. Try not to push off that back toe. If you need it for some balance or to catch you once in a while, that's okay, but don't rely on that. So it makes it a little different than the sprinter start, so you've got to absorb that impact all on one leg, down that down leg. So sitting back, kind of like a single leg RDL type movement, you are bending the knee quite a bit, but you're sitting the butt back a lot too. Opposite arm and leg, punching up there at the top, give you a little more momentum. 10 seconds to go. Three. <laughs> so 
So on their leg, coming up in two, one. Whatever you got in that leg. And if you're not getting off the floor, at least getting a little extra push. Trying to think more power as you go up. And then that catch is going to be tough too, and keeping the stability as well. Make sure you're not flying all over the place, crashing into things. Try to stay right around one spot with your foot. 15 seconds to go. Next one is going to be a plank with a hip rotation. So you'll be down in a plank position on your elbows and toes. Five seconds left. Hi guys, plank with hip rotation forearms, yes. And then big hip movements over the top, side to side. Goal is to keep those ankles attached if possible. And keep both forearms pressed down. So as you get over to one side, the opposite elbow forearm feels very light. But keep that driven down tight to the floor. 20 seconds out. And then you might clear the hips a few inches higher than normal, just to give yourself some leeway if you need it. 10. Three, two, good. But standard plank is more appropriate. Standard plank's fine. We'll do another round of plank with hip rotations here though. Nice tall plank position, drop the hips off to the side. Think about trying to reach the hip bones as far from the midline of the body as you can. So real big reach one way, real big reach back across. Twenty seconds out. Ten. Next exercise is going to be a push-up plus shoulder tap. We'll do one push-up, one shoulder tap, one push-up, the other shoulder tap. So knees or toes on this one. Good depth on your push-up, drive away. You'll want your knees or your feet a little farther apart than in your normal push-up to give you some stability on that reach up. But if it feels easy and you don't feel like your hips are moving at all side to side, you can try bringing your knees or toes a little bit closer together to challenge yourself more. But good slow deliberate reps, spending some time in that top position too, a lot of shoulder stability. 10 seconds left. breaths. As usual, if you're feeling super spry and this is easy, go right through the rest period. And all the usual cues on the push-up, everything stays together, not letting the low back arch, not letting that head drop before the rest of the body. Exhale every time you're pushing away. 20 seconds to go. Next one, we're gonna have a split squat off the bench, couch, or chair. So you'll want your supportive object there, and then if you wanna hold on to a weight, you can grab a medium to heavy weight for the seven seconds left. Couple more push-ups.
and a lot of focus on the depth in this split squat, guys. Could be under chin or in hand, but really allow that knee to settle down toward the floor. That's good depth. Yeah, a lot of weight in that front heel. That knee stays almost static. So as you sit down, don't let that knee cave forward too far. Allow the hips to sit back in space. Use the glute and hamstring on the front leg as a break. The torso will lean forward just a little bit as you sit down, similar to a back squat position. Chest coming down should engage a little more glute on that front leg. Five seconds. In five. Yeah, here we go. Same thing on the side. Try to find the same depth. Try to be nice and light in that back foot. And use it as much as you need to at this point, but try to be light. Really use the glute and hamstring on the front leg as a break. Load that side. Think about trying to treat it like a rubber band. Load it, and then as you come back up, hopefully there's a little bit of return. 20 seconds. The next exercise is going to be a curtsy lunge. I would suggest using the other leg, the leg that is back right now, as your front leg for the curtsy lunge. Instead of going right foot forward, right foot forward. You'll see. Three. So Ben just finished with his right leg forward on his foot squats. I would then ask you to put your other leg forward in the curtsy lunge so we're not going back to back on the same leg. Five. But I never started with leg. It's so strange. So putting almost all your weight on that front leg, the better you are with these, the less you're going to use the back leg for assistance. If you are not quite as strong with these, you, don't, you can actually tuck your toe underneath and use it to push off the floor a little bit in the back. But knee is coming forward on that front leg. Still keeping the heel driving down into the floor, just like with any of our lunges. And you can see how this, a little different than a reverse lunge because of that extra rotation around. Seven seconds to go. Oh yeah, you did those nice and slow. First reps all two, two, six. hard. Strange hard. So switching legs here. And again, if, it, if you want to make it more challenging, make it essentially a pistol squat with a little bit of rotation. But with that rotation, you should feel the outside of the hip on that down leg working a little bit more. So the glute, the outside of the glute working a little extra. And it challenges the balance a little bit more too because of that rotation. And crossing the midline of the body there. 12 seconds to go. Next one's going to be a super person down on your stomach. Alternating sides. Three, two, one. Two. A couple things left today, guys. Super stuff, opposite arm, opposite leg. We talk about it a lot. Try not to use the low back to initiate or to assist. Use the glute to lift the leg. Use the shoulder to lift the arm. And don't worry too much about height. If you're super mobile here and strong, great. If you're not, don't try to be. If you're comfortable moving all four limbs at the same time, you can. We would advise that it's a lot of pressure in the low back. So. If it feels weird, don't do it. This is more of just a, a movement drill than it is a, a really hard exercise. Just trying to sink the back of the body. 10 seconds out. Two.
Same thing in five. Back on here, guys. Superman again. Opposite arm, opposite leg, real gentle, real slow initiation. seconds and then we're going to go into a reverse lunge with an item overhead. I'm going to use one of our larger medicine balls. If you have something to hold on to, let's go ahead and do that. If you chose an item that is too heavy, then you'll probably want So oftentimes shoulders will burn out before the legs on this one, especially if you're alternating, your legs do a little break, but you're under constant stress with the shoulders, a lot of core as well, connecting that weight down to the legs. So try to keep it pressed up towards the ceiling. Try to keep those arms pretty straight, pushing away from the top of your head. 15 seconds left. Six. Getting towards the end here, a few more stations to go. Try to keep that energy up, keep that focus up. Form is staying solid with everything. We don't get sloppy at the end when we're tired. Maybe complain a little bit more here and there, but that's all right. Go ahead and curse at us, complain to us, as long as, uh, as, long as you're just doing it to the screen. Twenty seconds to go. If you're feeling really good at these, keep a good tempo. Split jumps if you're feeling super aggressive. Yeah, right. So it's like a it's all right, even do it for one rep. Seven seconds to go. Next one's gonna be a push-up with rotation. So it's gonna be a push-up and a reach-up towards the ceiling. Coming up next. So shoulders should feel a bit beat up after that. So don't hesitate to go to your knees if you need to for these push-ups. You're gonna want that wider base with the knees or the toes. So probably similar base to that push up with shoulder touch and similar core and glute engagement and then nice easy reach up and set the shoulder, open the chest, 20 seconds out. And just to that vertical position from knees, it might be hard to reach up to vertical. Just reach as far as you're comfortable. Don't strain yourself trying to get up there, 10 seconds out. Five. Two. Push up, vertical reach again. How far is your hike Friday in total? Yeah, what's the height distance? Uh, probably eight-ish. Yeah. Nine, eight, seven, 26. 20 seconds out. I remember it's like average, so probably eight. Ten. Next station, plank with a lateral foot tap. Five.
So on the elbows, good strong base there. And then a little tap out to the side. Try not to put a lot of weight into that tap. It's just a real light touch. So you keep most of the weight on that stationary foot. When in doubt, you can lift the hips up a little bit higher, but you don't want to get them too high. If you feel like you're sagging a little, then just think about pushing them up more. But the best you can just keep a good flat position, crunching those abs down, breathing throughout. 12 seconds to go. And we are taking a break. So we'll get through these. And then we're on to our last station, last working station. Then we'll get a little bit of stretching in to finish up. So these last two are core ones. So you got a good plank here and then it's gonna be a Russian twist for your next one to finish things out. So keep your consistent breathing. When you're doing the core ones like this, sometimes it's hard to take good breaths, but work on that the best you can. It'll help you go a little longer, a little stronger. 20 seconds to go. Last 10. And like I said, Russian twist will be the last one. If you want a weight for that, you can grab a medium-ish weight. Play around here with the angles, guys. Lean back a little more if you want more. Sit up taller if you want less. Heels on the floor to regress. Take some load off the hips as well as back. Nice rotation side to side. If you have a partner you're working out with, you can do a twist and throw the ball at him. And then a little twist, a little throw, a little twist, a little throw. Yeah, whatever, there you go. Some of that stuff. 15 seconds out. Get some hand one, Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, there, there you go. Oh, there's Ben. Five. One more of the same, guys. Five seconds out. Last Russian twist. Nice tempo. Work hard here. Last thing of the day before we get into a stretch. Then again, if you want a little more lean back, pull the heels off the floor. Take a little more rotation, a little slower rotation. 20 seconds out. Ten. Three, two, nice. We'll take 15 seconds to rest before we get into a figure four hip stretch. So cross crunch position or figure four, one foot over top of the knee. Then grab your arms around that leg. If you're like me and everything is tight, grab the hamstring instead. <laughs> I tried to grab it from you, there's no way. <laughs> 15 seconds out.
another 20 seconds, and then we're going to go into our wrist forearm stretch. Ten. Three, two. toward you and then if you'd like to lean the body slightly away from the palms, lean them back toward the heels, that will increase the stretch, but just be gentle and use it as a stretch. seconds here. Ten. Yeah, let's do some cat cow guys. Hands down, knees down, toes down. In five. <laughs> How's this laying on his back over there behind the camera? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of movement. <laughs> 20 seconds out. That's why you can get the figure four and I can't. Because <laughs> you <laughs> always stretch out the words. <laughs> Good lesson, everybody here. Yeah. Do you Ten. Stretch it. Do you darn stretch it. Put in work, you get results. Yeah. Three. guys back through the stretches if you need to want to got a butterfly peck tight but more core boom more legs bye